Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. So for this particular video, I want to take a look at the five themes of geography. Because these things you'll find, the five themes of geography are going to pop up a lot, especially as we take a look at geographic inquiry. It doesn't seem like it now, but especially as we continue forward with geographic inquiry, you're going to see how these things kind of intertwine. So uh, I wanted to go ahead and introduce these to you. And what we're going to first start off with is uh, location, is our first theme right here. And that is, well, simply where is it located, right? What's its absolute location? Where is its relative location? You got to dig back in your memory banks here. Remember, we just learned about it. Absolute location being its exact coordinates and address. Relative location meaning telling where something is using landmarks. Uh, place, what is it like there? Okay, so when we go there, um, is it hot? Is it cold? Are there a lot of animals? Are there hardly any? Does it get a lot of sun? Is there water around? You know, that's what we're talking about for place for description. Human environment interaction. How do people interact with the environment? Right? So some things to think about is, you know, people that live in cold environments, right? Well, you know, you're going to notice that they're going to bundle up more. Maybe these people have thicker jackets. Maybe their fashions don't include t-shirts and shorts. They, they include longer fleeces and thicker and, and, and heavier pants. Um, you know, if they live next to an ocean, Perhaps one thing that's very common is people are very into water sports because the water is right there. And maybe a lot of people make a living out of fishing or eating, or people enjoy eating seafood because it's already there. Um, even around here in Constantine, we're surrounded by a lot of really fertile land. So farmers very much rely heavily on growing corn that we use for seed corn, for example. Um, so that's what we're talking about, human environment interaction. Uh, and also, like, how do we change the environment around us? Do we build buildings? Are we, are we, are we growing anything out of the soil? Are we hunting anything out of the nature? Uh, what are we doing? Movements. Um, how are people getting around, right? So, like, here, especially, like, here in Constantine, one main way to get around is with vehicles. Right? Everybody drives in a car, they go somewhere, or maybe they take a quad. I've even seen people take golf carts, especially in the neighborhoods. They'll take a golf cart from one place to another. Um, but you go to some places, like take um, Venice that's located in Italy. While they do have streets, they actually have like what they're called canals. So um, you can think of them as like little rivers that go through Venice and Italy. And because it's because you see them all over Italy, more so than roads, a lot of people actually use boats to get around, right? They use boat travel, or maybe they go around on foot. And then finally, regions. Um, how might common geographic characteristics help us understand this place? So, um, you know, regions are kind of talking about, okay, um, you'll find that certain regions, certain areas of the world have certain things in common. So kind of jumping back and taking a look at the other, um, uh, taking a look at the other exam uh, categories that we just took a look at. Um, people that are from colder areas, like take up in Alaska, um, it's a very normal thing to take us, like it's actually a thing to take your snowmobile through, the, through McDonald's when you're going to get a coffee in the morning. Right? That's a very common area, or, or everyone else that grows up in Alaska, they're used to having feet upon feet of snow. They actually go through an a time where they actually have multiple months of no sunlight. That's a very common thing. Um, here, and, and it's very common to that entire area in, in Alaska as well. Whereas take Michigan, you know, it's very common around here that we have the five seasons. So we actually, we ha it, gets, it gets hot. It gets it get warmed up in the spring. It gets hot in the summer. It gets cooler in the fall, and we see snow in the winter. Whereas you go to places like Florida, and people don't see that, right? And that also influences how people live as well. So, you know, places like out in Maine, for example, that are closer to the coast, they, very, they eat a lot of seafood. It's very much involved in their diet. Whereas here, we do, you, you can get seafood, right? But you maybe can't exactly get fresh crab like you could out in Maine because we're not by the ocean. It's shipped in. Um, or even the way people dress 
right? You go to some countries in the world and you don't see people wearing blue jeans as much as say in America, it's known as a very American thing to wear. Um, or even how we speak. In Michigan, we actually have certain phrases that are very much associated with us and our culture. So take pop, using pop to refer to caffeinated beverages like Coke and Pepsi. You go to other areas of the US and they're gonna look at you like you have a third eye, right? And even how we pronounce our words. So that's what it's talking about when it comes to regions. Um, so to kind of help explain this in another way, now, typically I do this with an entire class, but if you're watching this video, chances are you're either, um, maybe you're watching this virtually, maybe you're homesick, maybe you missed a day of class and you're catching up. So I wanted to explain this in another way because you'll find that sometimes when it comes to explaining the five themes of geography, I got to come at it in a different kind of different level. So we're going to create a uh, brain bubble. So actually I'm going to use a thinner pen than the one I have. So let's go ahead and take a look at the five themes of geo. Oh, actually, I may have to switch pens after all that one's dying. Okay. So if we take a look, let's first take a look at location. That's our that's our first theme. So some examples of location can include, of course, we talked about absolute location, relative location, right? We use maps to figure out location, right? We do use GPS to figure out location, and we even use GIS when trying to map information onto it. We use cardinal directions, Oops. as we'll say cardinal directions, to figure out where to tell people to go. Oftentimes when you're giving location, you're maybe explaining um, people living in a particular country or city. Or maybe um, or state even. So these are all considered examples of location because these are all things to help that are used to describe location. Now, oftentimes people hear location, and I have a lot of students that they confuse location and place. So let's go ahead and do place now. Because place is a little bit different. Location is telling you where something is. Place, on the other hand, is describing it, right? So we have, you know, location. Because, you know, we want to find out where the place is. Is it a house? Building. Is the place hot? Or is it cold? How about the elevation? Is the place high in elevation, like up on a mountain, or is it low in elevation, like in a valley? Like where I come from, it's more of a, it's more of in a valley, or it's here constantly, we're in higher elevation. What's the temperature like? Is it hot? Is it cold? What about the climate? Is it um, overall? Is it rainy? Is it dry? Does this place get a lot of snow or is it like a desert? So these are all things that explain place. Now if we take a look at human environment interaction, so human slash, I'm going to shorthand environment here, interaction. Um, so how are we interacting with our environment? So think about it. You know, we do benefit from our environment, so we do get oxygen from plants, right? Um, we do have livestock, 
horses, pigs that we eat. Of course, plants that we also eat. We grow. Water, we do depend on water very much. So are we getting that from a local lake, a river? Or are we getting it from a well? Right? How about shelter? Are we building pla building places to live in? Like, are we building houses? Are we, and think about when we build a house, we have to cut down trees. We have to um, dig holes in the ground if you're putting a basement. How about in diseases? So as humans and animals interact, diseases oftentimes can be shared. So sometimes animals interacting with us, they get diseases that can make them sick, or we interact with animals, and sometimes we get diseases that make us sick. How, about, how are we getting our energy? Right, so are we getting it from water, like a turbine spinning in the water? Are we getting it solar, like solar panels? Or, or are we using windmills to help get our energy? Storms, what are we doing when we deal with storms, right? So, I mean, this can be from rainfall. We go inside our house, but if a tornado comes around, what do we do? Well, we have storm shelters that we go into. Um, sometimes these tornadoes come through and destroy entire towns. How do we how do we build? And that takes me to development. I'm going to write de develop for short um, because, you know, as we're developing the world around us, we're building more buildings, maybe we're putting in water parks, skate parks. That involves us cutting things down that, you know, nature that was growing there or creating an animal environments, and those animals have to relocate now. How about carbon dioxide? You know, as we're as we're burning fossil fuels, as we're running our cars, we're releasing that into the air. How is that influencing the environment around us? Now let's take a look at movement. So we're talking about how people and ideas get from one place to another. So think about social media. You know, where especially um, during the epidemic and the lockdown and all of that, people were definitely sharing ideas with TikTok and Snapchat and um, things like that. Um, uh, helicopter, or excuse me, no, let me back up. Let's talk about how ideas get or are moving around. So social media, internet. So we use the internet, YouTube, phones, calling, text, email, to send messages, even snail mail, to send packages. How about how we physically get around from one place to another? We have a plane, train, car, boat, bike. Just to name this name of examples. News. Oh, I almost forgot news is another way that information gets around. The news shares facts and stuff. Now let's take a look at regions. And this is one that I really, I know people can really struggle with. Because a lot of these, after I explain it briefly, people figure it out, but um, some of the other stuff people can struggle on, like regions. So how about talking about, you know, uh, regions? So places are broken up into regions, so like continents. You know, there's certain countries that, that are on certain continents, certain cultures that evolve in certain countries. Right? Um, or states. States have certain activities and the way they dress and behave that are very, that are, for a certain region. Uh, our culture is unique to our region. So think about it, we have language, food, uh, religion, just to name a few. Other things that can break people up into regions are like borders, because there's borders in between countries. Um, and sometimes, you know, just crossing a border, you'll find your, your, your experience in your culture, your new languages, your new ways of doing things. Um, maybe there's certain animals that have a certain importance. 
to certain regions. So like take the reindeer here in America, we view them and we think about Christmas and Santa Claus and them being really cute animals. Whereas in other regions, they, they rely on those on reindeer as like a source of food, as a source of warmth, even as a source of work. Some reindeer are treated like work animals um, because that's because that because those reindeer are really good to survive in those environments. So these, this is what I'm talking about in terms of region. Hopefully, going over all of this together helped clarify any confusion that may have existed about the five themes of geography. Please make sure that you are taking notes, rewatch this video, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me.